How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take your logo and do this treatment to it to make it look really cool, really unique and really special. Uh, but before that, I just released the cloth tutorial on my Patreon as well as the beta for the surface imperfections pack. You could check that out now before it gets an official launch. I also have 10 new materials and a new scene file from Syncretic so you can see the scene and get 10 amazing procedural materials on the Patreon. You get one live stream a month, 10 procedural materials, exclusive tutorials, project files from my different experiments, and I show you client work when I do different client work and things like that. You can all check that out in the description. Everything that I've released on there is currently available. You can get that. Uh, now let's get back into the tutorial. All right, so we're gonna start out with your logo in its vector format. So for example, if you wanna use a logo that already exists, something popular like uh, Shell Oil or Apple or anything like that, you would Google you know, Apple Logo SVG. It stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. The SVG format is what Blender wants. It does not want a PNG. The PNG won't work. Uh, you need an SVG. But if you are in a vector-based program like uh, Adobe Illustrator or any other other software that's vector-based, I believe Inkscape may be the alternate um, to Adobe Illustrator. Either way, if you do have the vector format of your logo, you can export out the SVG, you know, file, um, export, and use the SVG. And so what I'm going to do is just take this guy and I'm going to export him as the SVG. So I'll go to save as SVG, go to desktop, and I'll call this Nike, Nike 3. And then we'll go save, and I'll do that. So, you know, again, whatever vector program you're in, it'll have its own list of, uh, you know, buttons to press to export it out. But again, SVG is what you want. Uh, Photoshop SVGs tend to not work in Blender. Um, but yeah, so let's hop on over into Blender and make this really cool treatment on your logo. So I'm deleting everything here and we're going to go to file, import, SVG. We'll go to the desktop here and I see logo three, Nike three here. And when it imports, it's going to be extremely small. It's going to look like it didn't even import. That's okay. Just scale it up. And then one thing you want to do is fix the anchor point. I'm going to hit the tilde key. It's right above the tab key for me. And I'm going to hit tab, hit A. And this is me fixing the anchor point. The anchor point's right there, that little orange dot. So all we want to do is just center out the logo here in edit mode. Nothing too fancy. Now I'm going to hit RX90. Oops. Now I'm going to hit RX90. I want him to be facing this direction. And let's go ahead and um, go here to the curve settings. Bring your resolution all the way up on these two dialogues. So there's no low polyness to this. Um, see if you can bring that down to 11. You can make like a low poly nike logo which could be kind of cool depending on how you want to do that but we want it to be perfectly smooth all right so now we want to go and extrude him so you'll click ge geometry here almost said geography and we're going to extrude him to be you know however thick you really want your logo to be it's not going to matter too too much once we start beveling it uh but right around there for me is what i like now the most important part of this is beveling your logo right here on depth that's where you bevel it and that's where it's going to catch you the uh, edges that's really going to make this look cool so we're going to go here and bevel it say 0 0.002 and that looks pretty good again it is just kind of extruding the edge and kind of messing with the logo that's okay this is just the uh showing you how to do it but again we want these smooth edges so the light can catch it we're going to hit shift a add a camera right here and then i'll just drag him to be out there and I want the focal length of the camera. If you click on the camera, the green camera, I'm gonna make it 100. I want it at f as flat as possible and then I'm gonna hit G, middle click, zoom it out um, and then I'm gonna move around my logo to be however I want it to be. Now let's get our material. Let's go to, to the material preview, delete the mat that comes with it, click new, uh, no roughness, make it metallic. Let's head over and over to shading. So we're gonna do some things here. We're gonna bring this up so we can kind of see what's going on. I'm gonna get a noise texture and a hue saturation because we want to saturate the colors that are coming with the noise. So we'll plug the color into the color and the color into the base color. And you're not gonna see much happening here. Let's bring the saturation up to two and play with that scale until it's starting to fill up our object here. You can see now we're getting some pretty color uh, amongst this logo and that's the goal here now let's go ahead and go into lighting so we're going to go here and we're going to be in ev now you can use cycles for this either way it kind of looks the same uh ev of course will render it faster so we're going to go here and turn on ambient occlusion bloom screen space reflections 
And that's what you're going to want for this. We're going to go here, click on the color button and an environment texture. Now we don't have an environment texture yet. What you want to do is go on over to the internet and type in unsplash. These are free images. We're not going to use a um, HDR. We're actually just going to use an image to light this scene. So I'd like to type in lights. So we get some nice contrast and I used this image right here. So I'm going to download it again and put it on my desktop and we're going to creatively use it. So plug that right there. We'll go back here to Blender, click open desktop and we'll select that image. So now it's here in the scene, kind of lighting the scene. Now we need to manipulate this image to catch the bevels. So we're going to go here to shading bring this down a little bit here so we can kind of see what's happening. Go from object to world. Now we're going to have this right here. What I want you to do is make sure the node wrangler is enabled. So if you go to your preferences and click on add ons, you'll code it in ODE. Make sure node wrangler is enabled because we want to do something important here in just a second. So let's go here to the render view, get a color ramp. And that's going to take the color straight out of the image, make it black and white. And then the next thing I want to do is bring this black in so we can get just these specs, these speckled versions, the highlights of the, and those will become the lights for the image. I am going to hit control T here and we're going to do that. Now what I'm going to do is go back to layout and we're going to get a, a black background for this. So I'm going to get a plain RX 90, bring it back. I want it to be pretty far back. I don't want it to actually um, affect the logo, scale it up in the shading. We're going to go back to object, click new and just detach the surface. So it's pure black and then scale it way up. Um, that's just so we have a black background because this will be like a wallpaper. Does it need to be transparent? But if you don't want to do the black background, you can just do transparency um, in the film settings over here. So let's go back here to world and start manipulating this. Let's bring the brightness up and now see how it's catching those edges. But of course, we're seeing the image. That's where this mapping comes into play. We'll just move it around until it goes out of the view. And now we have a beautiful logo. Now we're not done. What I want to do now is um, go here and click render, render image, and we need to do a little bit of compositing. You can also just stop here. This is a beautiful image. Uh, but what I want to do here is go here to the compositing, click use nodes, shift a and get a viewer, VIE viewer, we're going to plug this image into the image here. You can go to view right over here and click fit. And then I'm going to hold down, I'm going to hold down shift left shift, right click and do that. And what that's going to do is everything we attach onto this line will go into the composite and the viewer, which is super, super important. I'm going to get a glare node, pop it there. And then on streaks, give it two. So now we have these streaks going on. What I want to do now is bring that fade pretty high up right here. And it's going to look really ugly until we bring the iterations to five and boom. Now we have this crazy fade. We can bring it back a little bit, something like this. And then we can bring the uh, mix down to lower the opacity of this effect. So whatever you like for this. And then for me, it's a little too washed out. I'm going to get a hue saturation value node and then get, bring the saturation up until I like the effect that it's giving me. We don't want the colors to start clipping, but we do want it to be beautiful. And then you can also play with the hue if you'd like to really change up the look, the effect. And there you go. Of course, this can be a little too bright for you. All you have to do is rotate the image, figure out how you like the lighting, but at the end of the day, this is your logo. This is your render. It's really cool. It's really beautiful. And you can use it for a lot of things. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check out the Patreon, it is linked in the description. And I hope you learned something.